Hello, this video is an introduction to trilobites. And trilobites are one of the most sought after of all Paleozoic fossils. I live in Cincinnati, Ohio. My name is Greg Courtney. I'm an amateur paleontologist. I'm the education chair of the Dry Dredgers. The Dry Dredgers, the Dry Dredgers is an amateur group of uh, fossil hunters, paleontologists, geologists. We go out and we fossil hunt once a month. They're affiliated with the University of Cincinnati's geology department. So dry dredgers go out and collect fossils once a month. We have monthly meetings at UC and we have uh, annual shows at the Cincinnati Gem and Mineral Show or Geofair either at the Convention Center or the uh, Cincinnati Gardens. This poster is an illustration of the Ordovician period. This shows geologic time, the various time periods, and we live in what's called the Holocene. And the Ordovician, we have to go way back in time, all the way to, uh, so sandwiched in between the Cambrian and the Silurian. The Ordovician was about a 60 million year uh, period when the sea level was about anywhere from five feet uh, in Cincinnati. Cincinnati was under the sea between five and sixty feet of water, and the sea level was uh, six hundred feet higher than what it is today. The world was a little bit warmer. The ice caps were melted, and that made the sea level much higher. So many marine invertebrate fossils are found throughout the United States, particularly. Uh, Ordovician outcrops we find in the limestone in the shale of Cincinnati. As fossil hunters, we go out and collect all these various species of marine invertebrate creatures. Um, I have made a collect. I've been collecting fossils for about 13 years, and if we put them on display. I put them on as, as well as the club. We put them on display for the public to see and to educate the public. I'm sharing some of my posters and fossils with everybody. This is a photograph of Isotelus maximus, the largest trilobite that is found in Cincinnati, the Cincinnati series. It is a large trilobite, anywhere from a few inches. So the previous record holder was 18 inches, found in Dayton. Now the world record is in Canada, about at 27 inches. So trilobites, they're extinct arthropods. We find them fossilized. There's many different species found here in Cincinnati. And one of the closest living relatives of trilobites that we find alive today, something similar, are horseshoe crabs. Isotelus maximus is the Ohio State fossil. Ohio has a state bird, which is the cardinal, the state tree, which is the buckeye tree, and now we have a state fossil, which is this animal here. I, this is a Paleozoic diorama, very similar to what it looked like during the Ordovician. And what it would have looked like, the undersea community, that the trilobites would have been swimming around in. So all types of seashells, coral, crinoids, nautiloid cephalopods, and snails, gastropods, brachiopods. All these creatures would have been their uh, contemporaries of the trilobites. This is another illustration of life during the Ordovician. And here we see a trilobite and some coral behind it. This is a very early primitive fish. No fish have ever been found in Cincinnati, in the Cincinnati series, uh, in Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, and the tri-state. Um, we don't know the exact reasons why. A few reasons could be they didn't like the salinity of the water. They simply had migrated here. The a number of the population on Earth of fish were very small. They were very primitive. They were just starting out in the early seas and oceans. And note that these fish are nothing like today's modern fish. These are very primitive ancestors that all uh, modern day fish descended from. Some of the brachiopods and this large nautiloid cephalopod which was eating quite a bit of trilobites as well as some fish in other parts of the world and horned coral and gastropods, snails. 
this is a Riker mount of some of the trilobites I've collected. This is the most common of all trilobites you can find in the Cincinnatian. And it is called Flexi Calamine Miki. Um, these are very common and they're found in two, two types. Either flat, what's called prone, or enrolled, where they're rolled up like a ball and they superficially look like pill bugs a little bit and this is again this is a close-up a few of them these are their mineral fossilized remains right underneath the hard outer shell in some cases they will actually uh, what you're seeing here is trilobite the outer shell is off and you see the infilling of calcite crystals so this is a very calcite rich internal mold of the trilobite here's here's the shell the shell is present here the shell is not and in brachiopods specifically the seashells a lot of times you'll see the crystal the points and geometric shapes of the crystals here you do not but it is infilled with the calcite crystals some more close-ups of the Flexi Calamine Miki. And you'll notice that although they all look the same, no two of them are looking quite identical. And by that I mean there's various different sizes and shapes and some are uh, glued back together that I have found and uh, some are prone in pretty good shape, others have been crumbled, some have snapped. Some of them have weathered out in the fields before I collected them. Okay, for every one of these trilobites, usually represents about a half an hour to 45 minutes of uh, collecting. This is an illustration of what trilobites looked like when they were alive. And the patterns on the shell, the color of the shell, that is, that will predominantly be unknown to science. That's one of the, the colors of dinosaurs and other prehistoric creatures. Uh, we'll usually, it's going to be forever a mystery because that's just something that doesn't uh, show up. Sometimes we see light and dark patterns on certain nautiloid cephalopods, a few other examples, but for the most part that's going to be forever be a mystery. Um, what I w wanted to show you was the fact that trilobites had antennas and little legs. They had crawling legs and a swimming leg and those are very, very rarely uh, fossilized. For the most part, we see only their hard outer shell. This illustration shows how the trilobite, what it's named after, uh, having three lobes. The illustration on the, lo on the right shows the actual lobe right down the middle, the golden color, and the left plural, plural lobe and the right plural lobe. So that's how it gets its name, very similar to uh, the Boy Scout sign of uh, three fingers held up. So one lobe in the middle and two lobes to the left and right. Uh, a lot of times that is confused with another division of the cephalon or the head and the thorax and the tail or pygidium. Many of these posters that I've shown have come from a website called Guide to the Order of Trilobites. Look it up on the internet and you'll see some wonderful information. One of the best websites in the world on trilobites. And on the underside it's usually empty and we have uh, what's called a mouth plate or a hypostome. And there are several different... each species has its own unique shaped uh, hypostome. And that mouth plate usually um, was used to help it eat some of them ate, some trilobites ate worms, some trilobites were eating uh, detritus, uh, things, organic material that they would find in the, the mud and the silt. This shows, this shows just the, the shell. This shows the little legs and the appendages sticking out from the shell. This shows a very old 1892 German engraving of uh, trilobite illustration of the trilobites grazing, crawling around, and on the seafloor. However, trilobites also, it's believed that some of them swam. They swam very well. The ones that are bullet-shaped with very big eyes and, and 
and uh, they have been found all over the world in, in much wider locations than the ones that crawled. So the ones that could swim had more geographical distribution than the ones that crawled.